All right, hello doers, Jose Ignacio here. Now, once I have my help desk team set up, as we saw previously, I can start receiving tickets from my customers. Of course, I can manually create a ticket in Odoo whenever a customer contacts Stealthywood, or I can automate this process, such as when I activate the channel setting. I can save myself loads of time, and that's always useful, because it's Stealthywood, we're always running around. Now, Odoo has three channel options for automatic ticket creation. We have email alias, website contact form, and live chat. We're going to go over email alias and contact form in this video. I'm going to save the other one for another spicy video on its own. Now I'm also going to review the automatic closing and customer closing options today. Now channels allows my customers to choose their preferred method of communication strengthening my relationship with the customer and reducing frustration. Now channels also save me time by organizing all ticket requests into one system. It's a literal win-win situation and scenario. So as I always say, enough chit chat. Let's see how it works in our stealthy wood database. All right. Hello doers. So here we are inside of the help desk overview. Now we reached here by selecting the help desk app from our main apps dashboard. Now, the very first thing that we want to go into to set this up is actually up here to configuration. And once we're in here, where do we go, doers? Well, we actually go over here to teams. Now, as you'll see, it's populated by the teams that I've created. If you have not created one yet, please watch the first video in this series on the overview of the help desk teams, because it will help you with creating one of these. And for our instance, we're actually going to open up this customer care team. Now, as you'll notice, the channel setting is available in the help desk team form. I can always go in and I can turn these channels on or off based on, you know, what I want to keep. Now for the first part of this flow, you want to make sure that the email alias channel setting is activated. In our case, it already is. Now, when you do check this box, this will appear down here, letting you know that you can edit the alias field. Now, in our case, since this is a customer care team, we want to name it as so. So for ours, it'll just say customer care. You could pick any name, but I would try to keep it, you know, very close to what you want the team to be doing as goals. Now, when customers send an email to this address that we have listed here, Odoo will automatically create a help desk ticket for me. And actually, while we're here, I'm also going to activate a few other settings. The very first one is I'm also going to activate the website form. Now you want to check this box if you want somebody to contact you through your website. And we're going to use that for later. So for now, we're actually pretty much done here. So now that we have made these changes, I can show you what the email alias looks like in action. So we're going to head on over here to my inbox where we put something away real quick. And we need a new message here. Now in this case, say I'm a customer. The question about my order has been missing. You know what happens? Suspiciously enough, it can even happen to us. Now I can send an email to the customer care team special email address that we created earlier. In this case, I'm going to type in a quick subject and a message. Ours is going to be missing stuff. Now, besides that, we also need something else. I don't have a tracking number. I am crying a lot. Very serious. And then we'll send the word and that one with this. We just end. Send. Let me go back here. Now, in the back end, I can actually go back to my customer care team's ticket page and see that Odoo has created a ticket from this customer's email. So, we're actually going to go back over here to the help desk overview. And then, where are we going to click, Odooers? We're actually just going to click on this tickets button right here. And we're going to do. Oh, actually, sorry about that. There we go. All tickets. And as you can see, missing stuff is right here at the bottom. Now you'll notice there's a few things that got populated. The email subject line becomes the ticket's name. And we can see the customer's email address right under that. Odoo has automatically assigned it a ticket number as well. And that's really useful. In our case, it's ticket number 49 over here. And you can also see it up here in the actual, you know, you know name, the name. Now, now. I can see, as you'll notice as well, the body of the email itself has actually become part of the description that we have over here. Now, the missing stuff and everything else is already populated, and we'll see that with the chatter as well. 
I can also see the automatic response that the customer has received thanks to that email template I set on the new stage of my pipeline. I can use the chatter to send messages to the customer, and I can also log internal notes for myself or my colleagues. Now, I can actually even type extra information about the ticket in the description tab, and I can even do other things such as setting the ticket type to just different things, you know? Is it an issue or is it a question? It could be both. If they're missing something, that is both an issue and a question of knowing where it is. But the cool thing is, thing actually can actually start typing, and, and what that should flash something on its own. Like, let's assume lost package. You'll notice we get the option to create it at this point, and we're going to create it. If we wanted to, we can actually use this internal link button right here, the arrows that I always talk about. And we can actually use that to change other uh, things that we might want to change about this lost package type at this point. Now, above it, you'll also notice I can use the stars to set a priority level on the ticket. We have, you know, medium priority. We have the other priority levels all the way up until urgent. You can basically use this to denote whether or not a ticket is very serious or if it isn't that serious. And below it, we also have tags. In our case, this would be a service thing. So we select the service tag. But you'll also notice, so doers, you can create your own by starting, you know, just to type right there. Now, finally, I also have the option to assign this ticket to myself or to another agent up here with the assign to option. Now, in our case, if you didn't know, we actually can actually just assign this to ourselves by selecting the assign to me smart button up here. So we're going to do that right now. And you notice immediately the chatter is populated, everything that we've done is updated, and now I appear up there. Now that was a super easy way to create a ticket, but setting an email alias isn't our only channel option. Now as you notice, and remember, oh doers, I did some sneaky stuff. I selected something else earlier. Now, customers can also contact us by submitting a request on Stealthy Woods' website. So we're going to go there now with some movie magic. And there we are. What do you have it? Now... Here we are, Stealthy Wood, beautiful website, amazing signs, everything professional. Now customers can go to the help page that we have over here set up to submit a ticket. And the reason why that's very useful, as you see me already here now, is they can submit a ticket when they visit our company's website. When setting up a form on the website, you can choose what fields you want your visitors to fill out. The fields marked with an asterisk, as we see here with, you know, name, email, and subject, are required for this form to submit. You want to make sure those are the minimum that you keep or else you'll have tickets with no names, tickets with no email, and worst of all, tickets with no subject. That is always very distracting and hard to help others. Now, my customers can also add a description here as well as any attachments they'd like. As you notice, we left those on asterisk because, you know, maybe they don't have a PDF. Maybe they can't reproduce it. Maybe the subject tells us everything. They've left us a you know, a very descriptive subject. Now, once they're done filling this out, they can actually hit the submit button when they're done. So let's give this a quick test. But first of all, I want to show you something. Notice when I hit submit, got to fill it out. So what do we want our subject to be? A legendary thing, a broken chair. Broken chair, please send an army. Can't spell today. All right, we have a broken chair. Please send an army. I have fallen and I cannot get up. This chair was one out of five. All right, perfect. Now, if we wanted to, we can also attach a picture, perhaps of us on the floor with our broken chair and unable to get up. But since we're done here, we can now submit this form properly. And you'll notice once it's done, Odoo automatically gives the customer a ticket number. They can actually click on that number to view their tickets as we do now, and you'll notice here, what do we have? They can click on that number to view their ticket, and since this customer already has an account with my company, what else does that end up helping us do? Well, this page shows them a lot more extra information. This page shows the ticket and any messages from the help desk agent, as well as things such as the stage that the ticket is in. As you'll notice, it is in the new stage over here. So, that's the front end, but what does it look like on the back end again? Well, oh doers. In the back end, if we go back over here to our help desk overview, customer care tickets pipeline, you'll notice it right there. We can see that Odoo automatically created a help desk ticket from the website form submission. We're going to click in there. 
Now, this ticket will have the same format as the one created through the email alias channel, except this time the customer's description of the issue will only appear in the ticket's description tab and not the chatter. Now, let's talk about this, oh dearest. As I work on the ticket, I'm help desk agent in this scenario. I can move it through the stages by selecting where it's on. I can actually just click up here, on hold, in progress, and we're done. And I even have some more ones over here. Now, this allows it to update, you know, the status markers. And in our case, we're going to leave this one on in progress because I am still working on it. But, oh no, look at that. I'm very smart. Once a ticket is solved, I can now move it to the solve stage. So I select this here, and we have solved this ticket. And since the solve stage is a folded stage, any tickets in that stage are also considered closed. So, once I move to this stage, Odoo marks that it is done, and it closes the ticket for me. However, I can also activate settings that allow customers to close their tickets themselves from the customer portal or allow Odoo to close tickets after a certain period of inactivity. Now, how do I do that, Jose? Well, Odooers, of course, I will always tell you. The first thing I have to do is I have to go to the Help Desk Teams form again to do this. So we're going to go back up to Configuration. And where are we going, Odooers? We're going back to Teams because it's per team specific. In our case, we're going to go back into Customer Care. Now... As you'll notice, we're going to scroll down over here, all the way down over here to where you see self-service. Now, right here, I can actually activate the customer customer closing option. So, so we all have to actually select the check this box. Customers. This feature allows customers to close their own tickets on the customer portal part of the Stealthywood website that we saw. Now, next, I want to add a little bit more flavor to this soup. So I can actually activate the automatic closing option that we have over here as well. And what this does is you'll notice uh, immediately some stuff also popped up. I can actually activate the automatic closing, which closes inactive tickets automatically. Now, in our case, we want this to be in the stage of, well, I want to make sure I have a closing stage. So in this area, I want to actually make sure that this is in the solve stage because that's when I think that it's solved. Now for the activity, the, well, the days of inactivity, actually, we're going to set it at 10 days, two weeks before we stop trying to help you. Now, in this in stages field, I can also select which stages Odoo will look through for inactive tickets. In our case, if I leave it blank, Odoo can close inactive tickets from any stage. Sometimes customers find the answers to their questions after they submit a support ticket. Automatic closing and customer closing help us close you know, these tickets freeing up time to focus on other issues. So realistically, if you leave this blank, it'll check in all the stages. And that's kind of what we want. But if you wanted to, you can specify a specific stage where you would like it to do this. And so, oh, doers, I have actually just checked my clock and I realized we're out of time. That's it for this lesson. Now, today we saw two channel options, email alias and website form, both of which automatically create help desk tickets inside of Odoo. We also learned how to activate the automatic closing and customer closing features to better organize the ticket pipeline. Now when a customer needs support, I want to make sure that the process is pretty easy. I want to give them multiple ways to contact me and the power to also close their own tickets. Now stay tuned for more tutorials on Help Desk. Thank you for watching and remember, so do, not oh don't.